Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we are thankful. Lord, thank you, Master, for this beautiful Father's Day. And Lord, help us to celebrate our earthly fathers, our spiritual fathers, and especially our Heavenly Father. So we celebrate you, Master. We thank you and praise you. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. I want to talk to you about, briefly, about the story of the pilgrims that came to Jamestown in Virginia in 1607. And I was in Virginia once. In fact, we both were there, and uh, Pastor Jemima had a ministry meeting. So uh, I was thinking, what should I do? I said, I'll go to Jamestown. And I don't mind uh, sitting there in her uh, meetings and listening. It's always a great blessing. But uh, I thought Jamestown was like 30 minutes away from there, and that's where the pilgrims first came into America. And I said, I'll go there. And I had another uh, friend who came with me. But the journey of the first pilgrims who came to America that led them to the eastern shores of what would become one of the greatest nations on earth. Her greatness would not be because the people did everything right. Many dark moments have been recorded throughout our history. But America's greatness is because she was established under God. You know, the nation that we get to live in is a great nation because it was established under God. It was established by the pilgrims, by the people of faith who came, who risked their lives. It was not an easy journey. On April 29, 1607, Reverend Robert Hunt stood and offered this prayer. And I want to read it verbatim. We do hereby dedicate this land and ourselves to reach the people within these shores with the gospel of Jesus Christ and to raise up godly generations after us. And with these generations, take the kingdom of God to all the earth. These were the first words spoken after the pilgrims landed here in Jamestown in 1607. May this covenant of dedication remain to all generations as long as the earth remains. And may this land, along with England, be evangelist to the world. May all who see this cross remember what we have done here. And may those who come here to inhabit join us in this covenant and in this most noble work that the holy scriptures may be fulfilled. From these very shows, the gospel shall go forth, not only to this new world, but the entire world. These were the first words spoken in Jamestown when the pilgrims landed in 1607. And of course, we also talk about Plymouth. People, pilgrims coming on the Mayflower that they came in 1620. But this was the first set of pilgrims who came with families in 1607. And they put up a cross right there at the shore. And when I visited Jamestown, the church is like six steps away from the shore. Six steps, literally. And it's still there, Stephanie. It's still there. And it's powerful to see how engaged these people were with God. And how engaged these people were with the gospel. They, have a, they had a heart to serve God. They knew their mission. The mission was to share the gospel. Then they read these verses. And I'm going to keep the same translation as they read it in. All the ends of the world shall remember and turn to the Lord. And all the kindreds, that means people of the nations, shall worship before thee. For the kingdom is the Lord's and he ruleth among the nations. Psalm 22, 27 and 28. That's how our nation began. We can never forget that. And we should continue to share with everyone around us because the present culture is talking about a post-Christian era and it will never be a post-Christian era 
because our nation was founded under God. Our nation was founded with biblical principles. Our nation was founded with the word of God. We should never forget that. Let's give a hand to the Lord. It's a powerful place to live. You know, it's a great blessing to be here. And we need to recognize and God is going to use us immigrants to bless this nation. That's why God has brought us here. There is a significant purpose for all of us to be here. You know, God revealed his purpose for the United States of America through this man of God, Robert Hunt. And he declared it prophetically of how this nation will share the gospel, will be an evangelist to the world. Even on the Mayflower, if you see, a similar covenant was written even as they came. To Plymouth. You know, the heart of the pilgrims is very clear. They wanted to found a nation on biblical values. They wanted to found a nation to share the gospel, to be an evangelist to the world. And now we see there is a shaking in America. There is a, a cultural shift going on. The enemy seems to be winning. I have news for you. The enemy is defeated. The enemy is under our feet. We have been given the authority to trample our serpents and scorpions. And America will prevail. America shall be saved. And America shall be healed. Let's give a hand to the Lord. We cannot forget the spiritual fathers who really founded the nation. You know, the words that were spoken on the nation. The words that were declared and decreed on the nation. That's why we do our declarations at the end of the service. There is power, power in declaring those words. But America still stands and stands because God has a purpose for our nation. And that purpose was declared by the people who first came to make this their own land, to make this their own nation, if you will. 1 Corinthians 4 and 15 says, for though you might have 10,000 instructors in Christ, yet you do not have many fathers. Yet you do not have many fathers. You know, where, what the nation needs, even looking at the fatherless generation and the cultural shift, and, the, and there are so many analysis that the place where the nation is is because of the fatherless generation. And we don't have time to get into the statistics, but fathers play an important role in the home. And spiritual fathers play even a greater role for the nation, for our communities, even for our own children. You know, of course, the family and the fathers and the family teach them. But having spiritual fathers continuing to give inputs to them really goes a long way. You may, you may have 10,000 instructors in Christ, yet you do not have many fathers. I think one of our key prayer points should be, Lord, raise up spiritual fathers like Paul. You know, Timothy's father is not mentioned in the scriptures. And we don't know. Was he alive? Maybe he was alive and he was not a believer. But his mother and grandmother were there and they were praying for him. And, but Paul was the spiritual father for Timothy and raised him up as a mighty man of God. You know, they are rare. Fathers are rare. I think the men in our church, we need to take up the mantle. We need to take up that call. We need to pick up that mantle for being fathers to many. You know, God will use us. You know, many need that voice in their lives, that encouragement in their lives. The word, the word is not there. There is so much ignorance about the word. You know, everybody is on TikTok and Instagram. And maybe we need to start sharing the word on Instagram, there are many who are doing it. You know, there are so many people, you will see people on the streets walking and crashing against the pole and they still are scrolling. I don't know. Tej, am, am I right or not? The young people, the young people, we need to impact. Let's have a conversation with them. Let's bring them to metamorphosis. Have a gathering in your home. Find some young people, bring them, they like food, buy burgers for them and have a conversation. Go to in and out you know, go to a drive-thru, go to Chick-fil-A, whatever they like, you know, 
you buy them food, they will listen to you until the burger is over. So have your message short and impact their lives because they tell them that your dreams can be fulfilled. You know, what are your dreams? What, what are you planning to do? Ask them the question. A lot of people I ask, a lot of young people, I don't know. I have seen that response. I don't know if you have seen that response. But then sit down and tell them you have a purpose. And, and help them identify that purpose. Have a conversation with them. So many people need fathers. And I think today's service is mainly to just stir us up uh, as fathers. Not only to be good fathers in our home, but be a father to the generation. You know, David served his generation. That we saw that last week. He served his generation. We need to have that vision. You know, if, if you don't think like that, then you won't do it. If you have that vision, well, I want to serve this generation. I see the trauma in the generation. I see the depression. I see the suicides that are happening. I see the hopelessness. And we need to say, well, I want to be a spiritual father to the Z generation that is really suffering, that is depressed, that is discouraged. We need to take up that, have those conversations, find the people. You know, we need to have so many come to metamorphosis or even form a group in your own neighborhood. You know, have those, con they really like if you can feed them and then talk to them. You know, recently somebody um, reached out to me uh, about a non-profit that they were launching. You know, they are not believers. And help everyone. You know, you get an audience to share a conversation. So, and I helped them. I mean, we had a Zoom meeting and they said, can we again meet in July? You know, guess what? July, they'll hear the gospel. <laughs> you know, hopefully. Let's see. God leads us step by step. So help everyone. People are looking for things that you've already done, right? Things that Vicky has done, maybe Rabbi has not done. So you can help in those areas. What you have done, you have knowledge in that area, help them. Many are looking for inputs. Many are looking for how do I do this? And they, can, they, they don't care where they get the help from. But let's be the people who help them rather than the enemy. You know, the enemy has formed thousands of non-profits in the last 30, 40 years, unfortunately and impacted the culture. And they have done it very strategically, and we don't have time. If you want to know details, I can share with you. Uh, and I'll not say anything more beyond that. First Thessalonians 1 and 5 says, For our gospel did not come to you in word only, but also in power and in the Holy Spirit and in much assurance. You know, when we preach the gospel, we must share with the power of the Holy Spirit. You know, not in word only, but also in power and in the Holy Spirit and in much assurance. You know, do we have that assurance as we share the gospel, as we share about the kingdom, where there are rights for the people who are part of the kingdom? 1 Thessalonians 2 and 11 says, As you know how we exhorted and comforted and charged every one of you as a father does his own children. You know, only a spiritual father can say that. Paul, writing to the Thessalonian church, he said, we exhorted and comforted and charged every one of you. You know, encouragement. Encouragement is needed for everyone. People are looking for encouragement. People are looking for inspiration. You know, nobody has ever told me, you know, I don't need any encouragement. If anybody is here, then let's talk after the service. You know, we all need encouragement. That's why that community becomes strong. If you can encourage someone, you know, they'll say, can, can I meet you again in July? You know, connect with those entrepreneurs. Connect with those people who want to make a difference. You know, and you have a mentee, you have a mentor. You know, life becomes so powerful. You are being mentored by someone and you are mentoring someone. Because you, you should give what you have learned in the word and even the experiences. People need that and that's can that's what can form the community to become the spiritual father if you will number two I want to talk to you about the fatherhood of god say with me fatherhood of god 
you know, uh, Dave DS actually texted me, can I have to grab my phone? I want to read that. Um, he wished me Father's Day and he sent this uh, quote by R.C. Sproul. I want to read it. And the Lord gave me this insight, but this is said in a better way. R.C. Sproul, the first Jewish rabbi to call God Father, to call God as Father directly was Jesus of Nazareth. It was a radical departure from tradition. And in fact, every recorded prayer we have from the lips of Jesus, save one, he calls God Father. Very interesting. The revelation of the fatherhood of God was not given. It was given only in the New Testament. Now, when we think about Father, it such, gives us such an amazing thought, right? You think about your dad. It feels, you see the comfort, you see there is security, there is peace, there is joy. You can ask for anything, you know. You can ask for a check without the amount and just the signature. You can ask for a credit card, you know. I won't mention uh, when and where. You know, you know it's okay. You know, God, God provides, Father provides, and it is the fatherhood, the role of the father that is key. And here, God as our Father is what I want us to think about today. You know, sometimes that revelation is, is not thought about. You know, we don't think about God as our Father, God as our provider, as person who loves us personally, who cares for us personally, who knows what we are going through personally, who has counted the hair on our head. You know, he knows which hair fell during the shower today in the morning. I'll not ask you to raise hands. It's amazing the details that God knows about each one of us. You know, that is the kind of love that we have from our Heavenly Father. It's amazing. Great truth that we need to understand. A Father who is our God a father who has left an imprint of his fatherhood in the entire universe. In the entire universe. Ephesians 3, 14 and 15 says, For this reason, I bow my knees to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, from whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named. From whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named. It's a significant verse. Paul is writing to the Ephesian church, talking about the Father, saying, from whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named. The whole idea of fatherhood exists in eternity, if you will. It did not begin when the earth began. Because we know our God is a triune God, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. And in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. The Son was with God even before the foundations of the earth. So the, the concept of fatherhood has been there in eternity. It's an amazing thought. The idea of fatherhood has been there in eternity, if you will. Even in Matthew 6 and 9, when Jesus is teaching the disciples to pray, it says, Our Father in heaven. Our Father in heaven. It's not only my Father, but it's our Father. There is, there is a community. There is a brotherhood. We are brothers and sisters in the Lord. Everyone, God created everyone in His image. And He wanted us to worship Him and praise Him. And that was the general purpose for everyone. And we can relate. You know, all, the entire human race is a family and some have not recognized this father. It's like the prodigal. You know, there has to be a revelation of the father. And we all need to understand and have the revelation that he is our father. We have to think about it. You know, some might not have fathers on this earth today. But we have our heavenly father always. Let's give a hand to the Lord. We have our heavenly father always with us. 
You know, Jesus said, John 14 and 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. I think we miss that. We always quote, of course, Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Jesus is the way and Father is the destination. We have to think about it that way. You know, Jesus is the Son who died for us on the cross and made a way for us to connect with the Father. Jesus is the way. Father is the destination. So Jesus is the one who builds a bridge for us who fall short of the glory of God to connect with the Holy God. It's amazing to know that. Do you know God as your father? Do you know God as your father? Think about it for a moment. Do you know God as your father? Matthew 11 and 27 says, All things have been delivered to me by my father. And no one knows the son except the father. Nor does anyone know the father except the son. And then it is a profound verse, and the one to whom the Son wills to reveal him. Only Jesus can reveal the Father to us. Only the Son knows the Father. Only the Son, S O N, capital S, can reveal the Father to you and me. Only the Son can reveal. And once that revelation comes, you know, it is, it is a place of amazing peace. It's a place of amazing joy. It's a place of security. It's a place you want to be. So much more there is in the gospel. There's so much more. And we are talking about kingdom. You know, there is so much packed in the gospel. And... And those revelations will keep us going and we continue to dig into those revelations, if you will. And Matthew 11 and 29 says, and 28, of course, come to me, all you who are weak and heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. We all need that rest. It's the rest of God. And then 29th verse says, take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I'm gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your soul. You know, God's purpose is never a big burden. God's plan for your life is never a big burden. The yoke upon you, take his yoke upon you. His yoke is to do the Father's will. And if we decide to do the Father's will, you know, God, the yoke will not be a big burden. If you are doing your own will, then it will be a big burden. It's significant to understand that. You know, that's why we talked about purpose. That's why we talked about vision. What is your purpose? We need to understand that and ask God for that purpose. Once he reveals to you, then you align with it and walk along in that direction. And that will be a yoke that will be light. If we go after our own imagination, the yoke won't be light if you will. 1 Peter 3 and 18 says, For Christ also suffered once for sins, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but made alive by the Spirit. Made alive by the Spirit. There are four things I want to talk about from knowing the Father. Number one, say with me, my true identity. My true identity. 1 John 3, 1, that is the big crisis that is going on in our nation right now, especially with the young people. They don't know their true identity, and that's why we see all the tangential things and ungodly things that are going on. I will not even mention what it is. You know what it is. The true identity. If we know our true identity, then the confusion will be removed. The ignorance will be removed. The ignorance will be destroyed, if you will. 1 John 3 and 1 says, Behold, what manner of love the Father has bestowed on us, that we should be called children of God. That we should be called children of God. 
turn to your neighbor if you have one. I, I know Stephanie doesn't have a neighbor here. Say, you, I am a child of God. Yeah. I am a child of God. I mean, the true identity. Now, think about it. We are children of the Most High God. We are children of the God who created the heavens and the earth. We are children of God who owns the cattle on the thousand hills. He owns the silver and gold. You know, there is no lack of resources in the kingdom. God will provide for the vision because he is the one who gives the vision in the first place. But he is going to definitely test the vision. And the enemy also fights the vision. But God will also test the vision, test you if you are persevering with the vision. That's why we need to continue and keep on keeping on, if you will. The true identity for each one of us is that we are children of the Most High God. You know, once we have a clarity in that understanding, there will be no confusion. There will be absolutely no confusion about anything that we see in the current generation. It's, it's crazy what is happening. The word, the word love, you know, Love the Father. Behold, what manner of love the Father has bestowed is the agape, the word agape, which really means affection or benevolence, unconditional love, and it also means a love feast. That was a good one. Do you like that word? A love feast. Say with me, love feast. That is the kind of love our Father loves us. It's a love feast. You know, all of us like to have a feast. How many... How many like to have a feast? Of course. Some are not raising their hands. Uh, maybe they are having a feast and not listening. <laughs> How many like to have a feast? Okay, good. <laughs> love feast. I love that. True identity. There is so much love there. You know, even if we do not have our earthly father with us. And those of you who have, it's, it's a bonus. You know, it's great to have our fathers to instruct us, to guide us, to pray for us, and be rooting for us, and encouraging us, and, and, uh, and thinking and knowing that we are the best, you know. There's so much encouragement and inspiration. My, my dad encouraged me so much. Uh, it's just amazing. And praise God for a dad like that. Isaiah 64 and 8 says, But now, O Lord, you are our father. We are the clay, and you are you are potter, and all we are the work of your hand. You are our father. You are our father. It's, it feels so good to just say, say, say together with me, you are our father. You are our father. You know, never forget that revelation needs to be there in our heart. He is our father. He is our potter. We are the clay. The whole ministry is based on Jeremiah 18, uh, where it talks about the potter and the clay. Isaiah 63 and 16 says, doubtless you are our father. Say with me, doubtless you are our father. There's absolutely no doubt. There's absolutely no doubt that he is our father. And then it says, uh, you, O Lord, are our father. Our redeemer from everlasting is your name. Our redeemer from everlasting. Say with me, our Redeemer from everlasting. That is his name. Our Redeemer from everlasting. Wow. Galatians 4 talks about, and because you are sons, God has sent forth the spirit of his son into your hearts, crying out, Abba, Father. It's a spirit of adoption. We are all children of God. There is no grandchildren for God. You know, we are all children of God. Each one has to establish that relationship with the Father. And the only way, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And he is the only way to connect with the Father. And yes, we all have a Father, but we need to build that bridge to connect with him because we have fallen short of the glory of God. And, and we can call him our Father. You know, the genealogies always talk about the son of, I don't know if you like to read that, I don't. <laughs> but it's important. You know, the, there are some important revelations in the genealogies. And you might say, why is it there? But really, 
shares the importance of a multi-generational God, a multi-generational God. God thinks in multiple generations and once one is saved, the household will be saved, you know, and not only the household, but the children's children will be saved and the generations will serve God. That's how our God thinks. Romans 8 and 15 says, for you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you received the spirit of adoption by whom we cry out, Abba, Father. You know, there is nothing to fear. You know, life throws challenges at us, trials and tribulations and layoffs and uh, inflation and everything that is going on. You know, interest rates going up and uh, home prices going down. I know these are challenging times, but it should not deter us because we are part of the kingdom of God. It should not deter us because we know our true identity. We know our father. Our father owns everything. He owns the universe. You know, uh, the home prices going down is not going to hurt us because we are part of the kingdom. We are heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ according to the word of God. I mean, that's an amazing position to be. You know, when you know who you are, you know, then you can just, these things doesn't matter. You know, you can face anything because you have your father with, us, with you. And we know and you know that he loves you and cares for you and knows everything that is going on in your life. And we can cry out to him, Abba Father. You know, Abba means source and sustainer. He's our source. Our source is not our job. He's our source. He's our provider. He is watching over us. His eyes go to and fro throughout the whole earth to see whose hearts are loyal to him. That is the kind of God he is. You know, his resurrection power is directed toward us. It's amazing. So much love, so much care, power available to us. The Holy Spirit living in us. The anointing resting upon us. The fire of God upon us. What an amazing opportunity to understand who we are. You know, not many understand who we are. And there is nothing to be prideful of. You know, God always says we need to walk in humility. You know, God, because he humbled himself on the cross. So he becomes a role model for us. We need to be people who serve. Once we understand our true identity, you know, nobody else, there is no competition. We align with our purpose and running with it and help others to run with their purpose. You know, there is no competition in purpose. Once we know our identity, we will not compete like that, like the worldly people do. You know, even in the church, how big is your church? You know, how many people attend the Bible study? You know, we follow our purpose. Jesus trained 12 leaders and the world turned upside down, you know, because that's what his calling was. You know, his purpose was he embraced the cross and he executed what he was supposed to do. Number two, once we understand the fatherhood of the heavenly father, we'll understand that our home is heaven. Say with me, my home is heaven. You know, one man of God told his wife that when I go on to be with the Lord on my tombstone, and she, he said, if you build a tombstone, <laughs> very loving man, he said, put on my tombstone, gone home. Gone home. Amazing. I was blown away when I heard that. My home is heaven. You know, it's an amazing thing. Our father in heaven. Our father is in heaven. So our home must be heaven. And we should live our life like that. Our home is heaven. Hebrews 11 and 14 through 16 in NLT says, Obviously people who say such things are looking forward to a country they can call their own. If they had longed for the country they came from, they could have gone back but they were looking for a better place, a heavenly homeland. That is why God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he has prepared a city for them. 
for he has prepared a city for them. There is a better place than our homeland. I know we are all immigrants and we might miss our homeland. You know, some of us obviously were born here. And, but maybe some of us miss our homeland. You know, we can always go back. I know many have gone, and that's why there are so many empty chairs. They have gone to their homeland. But I'm here to tell you that there is a better place. Say with me, there is a better place. I'm glad some of the families have gone. You know, we just came back in April, so nothing against going back to the homeland. It's powerful. But there is a better place, a heavenly homeland. What a term. Say with me. Heavenly homeland. Heaven, my home is heaven. Spurgeon says, earth is our lodge and heaven our home. I like it. Earth is our lodge, heaven our home. Earth is our holiday inn in modern terms. <laughs> heaven our home. Spurgeon is an amazing man of God. John 14, 2, it says, in my father's house, are many mansions, you know. You know, in our home, there are two rooms, one for Josh and Hannah. Even when Hannah goes away, the room is still there. And, and Josh actually uses that room and he uses both the rooms, but that's a different story. <laughs> in my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I'll come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, there you may be also. There is a place being prepared for us in heaven. You know, there are stories about if you serve God little, then you will have a smaller hut. I'll not go there. <laughs> it says mansions, I'll believe it. I don't know where that, that's not biblical. <laughs> it can be a good motivation, Christy. 2 Corinthians 5 and 1 says, For we know that if our earthly house, this tent is destroyed, we have a building from God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. You know, when we leave this earth, immediately we are in the presence of the Lord. You know, that's an amazing thing. And uh, death should not scare us, but we should finish our purpose and then go. You know, like Paul finished his race well. You know, he knew. He poured, poured himself out like a drink offering to finish his purpose. He pressed on with all the challenges. I mean, reading about the challenges Paul faced, when you read that, you think you are living an amazing life, right? I mean, Paul's challenges, there is no comparison to what we are facing. You know, we are living a very comfortable life, but we can push harder. We can do a little bit more to share the gospel, to bless the Z generation, to be serving the generation, to impacting the people around us. There are people who will open up to you even in your workplace. You know, go grab lunch with them and have a few conversations, they will open up to you as to where they are and what prayer needs they have. You know, have a heart-to-heart -heart conversation because it's easy to just say hello the American way. You know, the garage door opens, we back out our car and wave to our neighbor. How many do that? I'll not ask you to raise hands. And we don't even know their name and I'm guilty of it as well. You know, I've forgotten this person's name. I need to go and catch up with him. You know, we need to love people. You know, I know we, we are busy. And that's why we are not able to connect with the people, but that should not be a reason. Take the time to talk to people. And I remember a time, I think I've shared this before, one of our neighbors, uh, when we were in South San Jose, I just came outside to put away the garbage bins. And this lady came there and we just started talking for a couple of minutes and she was in tears in a minute. She didn't have anyone to talk to. And I just said hello and how are you doing and she broke down. You know, that is the kind of challenges people are living in. You know, maybe they have lost their jobs. You know, have that heart to heart conversation. 
you know, you don't know what they are going through. And they might be depressed. You could share the word. You know, there are so many, there are so many calls we are getting on depression and suicidal behaviors. Just two days back, uh, it was heart-wrenching. This is what is happening in our culture, especially with the young people. And they need they need counsel, they need encouragement, they need conversations. They need conversations. Believe it or not, it's it's all TikTok. You know, it's sad. You know, they are engaged in, and I think the social media statistics says sometimes they are spending 12, 13 hours on social media every day. Every day. There is a work for us to do, fathers and even mothers, everyone. I mean, this is all hands. This, we cannot say just the fathers. It has to be every one of us that is involved in blessing the communities, in blessing the people. Have those conversations. Number three, my total security is in him. Say with me, my total security is in him. You know, we can be secure. You know, our bank balance doesn't give us security. Our job doesn't give us security. We might be working for the best company in the whole world. Doesn't matter. Our security is in him. Matthew 10, 29 through 31. Are not, are not two sparrows sold for a copper coin, and not one of them falls to the ground apart from your father's will? That's an amazing verse. I mean, sparrows, they are totally insignificant. We do not spare a thought to the sparrows. I just came up with it. <laughs> spare a thought to the sparrows. But then the father knows that that one sparrow will fall to the ground. The very hairs of your head are numbered. Do not fear, therefore, you are of more value than many sparrows. You know, say, say together with me, I am of more value. Sparrows. <clears throat> you know, our value is not based on what we have. Our value is based on whom we know. Our value is based on whom we know and whose we are and who we are. That is the security we have. John 10 and 29 says, My Father who has given them to me is greater than all, and no one is able to snatch them out of my father's hand. The enemy cannot snatch you out of the father's hand. Once we accept the Lord Jesus Christ, because he says, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no one can come to the father except through me. And once you come to the father, no one can snatch you out of the father's hand. No one can snatch you. Matthew 7 and 11 says, if you then being evil know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give good things to those who ask him? You know, just ask, seek, and knock. And continue, continue to walk with the Lord, knowing that you are valued, knowing that you are loved, knowing that you are cared for. Every discouragement be removed in Jesus' name. Lord, we pray for the Z-Gen, Lord. Every discouragement be removed in Jesus' name. Every fear be removed in Jesus' name. Every anxiety be removed in Jesus' name. Every anxiety attack, we cancel it in Jesus' name. Every suicidal thought, we cancel it in Jesus' name. Bless the Z-Generation, Lord. Thank you for their heart to serve. Thank you for the creativity that you have given. Surround them with a fence of fire. Strengthen them, Lord. Deliver them, Lord Jesus, from the addictions to social media. Deliver them from addictions to drugs, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Master. Do a mighty work. Do a mighty work. Let them know their true identity. Let them know that they are valued and loved. Let them have their security in you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Psalm 40 and 5 says, Many, O Lord, my God, are your wonderful works which you have done. And your thoughts toward us cannot be recounted to you in order. I love that. God is thinking about you so much. 
He has great thoughts for you, great plans for you, great future and a hope. And it says, his thoughts cannot be recounted to him in order. That's how many thoughts he has about you. He loves you so much. He's thinking about you. It's like when our children go away to college, you know, we do think about our children. But I don't think it will be so many thoughts like our father in heaven. Yes, we think about our children. But then it says, his thoughts cannot be recounted to you in order. If I would declare and speak of them, they are more than can be numbered. They are more than can be numbered. Now what an amazing God we have. What an amazing Father we have. Our identity is in Him. Our security is in Him. And our home is heaven. And finally to close, my motivation to serve is to please Him. Say with me, my motivation to serve is to please Him. John 8 and 29 says, And he who sent me is with me. The Father has not left me alone, for I always do those things that please him. We need to be like Jesus. For I always do those things that please him. And let's think about it ourselves. Are we doing that? Are we doing that? That should be our motivation that should be our motive. That should be our intentionality when we serve God. Have an intense desire to please the Father. Will what I do please the Father? John 4.34 says, Jesus said to them, My food is to do the will of him who sent me and to finish his work. See, there is a work for us to finish. Jesus had a purpose. Jesus had a work to finish. You know, my food is to do the will of him who sent me and to finish his work. Do we live our life like that? You know, it's okay to go to potluck parties. I'm not saying don't go. But our mindset should be, you know, my food is to do the will of him who sent me. It's a great life to live like that. My food is to do the will of him who sent me and to finish his work. I like that term, to finish his work, because there is a time given. We all have 120 years. I like to believe that on this earth. But there is much to do. When you have a vision of transforming nations by transforming communities, there is a lot to do. But we will continue to push forward and keep on keeping on, if you will. Let's all stand up. <clears throat> Thank you, Lord. It's a beautiful Father's Day, and enjoy the rest of the afternoon. But before that, let's do a decree and even pray for those who do not know the Father through Jesus. Now, but let's first do the decree. Now, I like the decree today. Uh, it's going to be exciting to just declare it and to live it. My God is my Father. God loves me, cares for me, and I belong to the best family in the universe. When I know my Father, I understand my true identity. When I know my Father, I understand that my home is heaven. When I know my Father, I understand that I'm totally secure in God. When I know my father, I understand my motivation to serve is to please him. The Z gen will understand their identity and be totally secure in God. We decree a mighty revival among the Z gen. America shall be saved. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Master, for the word of God. There is so much in the word, Lord. Help us to learn. Help us to understand. Help us to teach others and live according to the word. Thank you for the revelation of the Father that was given in the New Testament. 
Lord, and Jesus spoke about the Father. Thank you, Master. Help us to not only understand it, but to live it. Lord, give us a deep revelation of the Father. Thank you, Master. Thank you, Lord. Those who are watching online, or maybe you watch the video later, if you do not know this Father in heaven, then this is your opportunity to receive his son, Jesus. That's the only way. Jesus said, nobody else in the history of the world claimed that I am the way, the truth, and the life. Nobody else. Only Jesus claimed that I am the way, the truth, and the life. All the other religious leaders are dead and buried. And they are still in the grave. And I've been to the tomb of Jesus. It's empty today. Let's give a hand to the Lord. There is only one tomb in the whole world that is empty. And that is Jesus. And he claimed that he is the way, the truth, and the life. And if there is a nudge in your heart to receive this God, the God of the Bible in your heart, then you should Follow what the Lord is inspiring you in your heart. It's, a, it's typically a burden in your heart, a, a, a trickle in your heart, if you will, that there is a truth being spoken here and I want that. And if that is you, then just pray together with me. Let's be quiet. It is, these are precious moments. Children, please be quiet. Thank you, Lord. Bless the children as well, Lord. Thank you for the wonderful kids. Thank you, Master, that they are also part of the service. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Master. Let's pray together, especially for those who are watching online or anyone here who feels, well, I, I want to know this God who loves me so much, who cares for me so much, who's a father to me. We can pray together. Heavenly Father, I do not know you. I do not know this God of the Bible, but I want to know. And I know the only way to know you is to receive the Lord Jesus Christ in my heart as my personal Savior. If that is you, if you, if you prayed that with me, then you are a new creation be part of a Bible-based church wherever you are. If you are in the Bay Area, you're welcome to join us at the Blessing Church. We are very close to the airport here in San Jose. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Master. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make His face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up His countenance upon you and give you peace.